All right, everyone, it is now Tuesday morning. So I did go on the Montreal at night tour last night, and I did go out bar hopping as well after. So uh, first matter of business right now is I'm probably going to go get something to eat, and then I'm going to go get my car, which is probably a mile walk from where I am because I left it at the bar last night. Um, after that, I have a few museums I plan to go look at, and so we're going to go check out the Biodome, the Biosphere, McCord Stewart Museum, and I think the casino as well. So... I mean, if we don't have time for the casino, we don't have time for the casino, I mean. Um, so I'm at this place here called Schwartz, as I heard last night from my tour guide that it was busted. So I'm definitely going to check it out. They have this uh, smoked meat sandwich in Quebec, which is kind of like brisket, I guess. Or no, it's more like pastrami from what I've been told, but I'm definitely going to try it. That's the biodome there, just sitting in fucking traffic. Almost there. All right, here at last. Just walking in, parking was a bitch. I already got one parking ticket in Montreal, but I'm not planning on paying it. See, I'm not even sure. If you get a parking ticket in Montreal, how does that work if you live in New York? Will there be repercussions or not? That's what I'm curious about. Biodome, here we are. Montreal now. I was here last night, but during the night, but oh, might as well check it out during the day. There's a cathedral there that's got scaffolding all over it. It's the thing about Montreal, there's always lots of potholes, traffic, and construction, just like any other European city. Big touristy area. I know the restaurants are pretty expensive in this part. Got a uh, brick streets, just like in Europe, but it also incentivizes people to drive slow so people don't speed through here. Biosphere. I didn't know that the biosphere and the biodome were two separate things, but this is on St. Helens Island, and I saw it earlier when driving into the city. But this is the biosphere. I wonder what's inside. Thank <laughs> you. 
floor of the biodome. So I guess the elevator took me all the way up here. everyone all right everyone we're now at the casino casino de montreal heard good things about it it's definitely a different look at the most casinos i've heard about or been to but let's go in and uh, hopefully we can make some money I already lost 20 bucks on slots. Right now I'm heading up to the blackjack table, which is two floors up. Hopefully I'll have more luck at this. Well, didn't have too much luck at the casino. Uh, sorry I couldn't record too much. They're not very fond of people recording in there. Uh, next stop is the Ferris wheel. There it is, the Ferris wheel. Getting on the last one. They told me I could have this one all to myself. There's a heater in here. Maybe an AC unit. Oh, you can adjust it on that screen there. It's kind of cool. Montreal. All right, just turn up the heat a little bit. It's been chilly in here. All right, here we go. That's uh, suburbs of Montreal across the river, you know, like uh, Longueuil, I believe one's called, and then there's one called Broussard. That's all across the St. Lawrence. So it's not part of Montreal, but it's uh, part of the metropolitan area. Is that uh, old Montreal down there? That all is um, old Montreal, as they call it. It was, you know, that's the French part of it. Montreal is essentially split into two kind of if you think about it western montreal it's all english settlers and english speaking and east montreal it's more you know french architecture and french speaking so yeah i definitely uh, recommend going to montreal um what i would definitely recommend those i definitely recommend being here for friday and saturday night because uh I drove up here Saturday afternoon and I went out clubbing Saturday night. I had a pretty good time, but the problem is I went out later than I originally should have. I mean, I went out around 11 and where I'm from in Albany, clubs and parties don't usually get, don't usually, you know, fill up until, um, until like 11. So I thought it was the same principle in Montreal, but pretty much 11, 11.30, a lot of the places were full and it was bottle service only. So it was hard to find a bar to get into, but uh, once I found a place, I had a pretty good time. Uh, just, well, I, I kind of wish I'd just been up here Friday night too, because uh, I probably should have done that, but I didn't figure that unfortunately, but maybe I'll come, uh, I'll probably come back eventually to Montreal. Today's like day three and there's 
One more day left Thursday, I'm essentially just driving home, so I don't really count Thursday. I'm not going to do much, so I should just drive. Um, oh, now we're stopping while I let more people on. Last night in Montreal, so I'm gonna go out and party crazily because I'm probably leaving tomorrow morning unless something changes. It's right around 10 p.m. and it's still nice and not it's not cold out at all. I mean I'm wearing a light coat and I'm feeling great. It's about 45 degrees-ish. People saying it's an unusually warm winter. <laughs> trip pretty much um, I'm just packing up and I'm going home now so it's been a pretty good trip there were a few minor inconveniences and obviously I didn't do a super great job planning this as I planned it all last second so I mean there definitely would have been some things that I would have done differently uh, I probably will come back here in the future again probably not for you know four or five days but maybe for like the weekend because it's a big like party destination like people will drive up here for the weekend and party and then they go back home I met a lot of people who pretty much were just here for the weekend. All right, well, it's Friday morning and I'm getting ready to leave and someone broke into my car because this was not all here like this last night. So something happened. Now I'm guessing how the hell did they get in? Um, fortunately, I didn't really have anything valuable. I'll see if I'm missing anything. They also tampered with the fuse box, but it doesn't look like they took anything. Can't get it closed, but I'll deal with that later. So yeah, the only thing they really stole was uh, the dash cam, and uh, I had a first aid kit in here that's gone. It's really all they stole aside from that, they just rummaged through here. I didn't have any valuables in here, so that's good. Uh, and they did tamper with that fuse box down there, but I don't know what really um, what they could have taken there. The car seems to run fine, uh, knock on wood. All right, got all my stuff, heading to the car now. I already made the first trip, so this is just the last two. Uh, I'll be checking out right now. All right, the car's all packed, ready for the uh, four hour drive home. So yeah, when the car got broken into last night, the only thing they really stole was this. And I had a uh, first cadet in the uh, center console, but they just, for the most part, just made a complete mess. Um, that's really what they did. Um, I don't even know why they stole that dash camera because that dash cam is on its last legs anyway. It's like 10 years old. So they that thing was on its last legs and they stole it. So jokes on that because that thing barely works anyway. Um, what amazes me is where it happened because I was parked on a main street. I was parked on the uh, St. Lawrence Boulevard over there. Um, and there's no meters at night and I was parked there because it was free. Um, and someone decided to break into the car apparently and which amazes me is that it happened on a main street when I park on side streets The car was fine. So another thing about Canada is you need to prepay for gas So what you need to do is you need to put your credit card in uh, There we go, we put that in you Need to put it in and then you need to like prepay Before you start pumping gas Which uh, I've never seen that before. Uh, I think I put it in the wrong way Thing. there we go so yeah um you need to prepay for gas even if you pay for your car so i need to type in you know i want to put 20 dollars in my tank you don't see that in the u.s in the u.s you just give it the card and it charges you for whatever you fill it up to i'm not filling it up to the brim i'm gonna fill up in plattsburgh on my way back home because gas here is not cheap in canada it's way cheaper in plattsburgh there's a place there i filled it for 309 a gallon on my way up so um let's uh let's give it I don't know, twenty dollars. That should do the job. So 
so yeah now it's gonna i'm gonna pump twenty dollars worth of gas into the car and then once it hits the 20 mark it shuts off so the fact that you need to prepay off a credit card is kind of odd because i've never seen that before i mean before you could prepay when you go um before you could prepay when you fill up you could prepay when you get when you pay with cash all right we got the road mapped out for us um the only reason i'm not using the apple carplay is because um uh, i don't have any data right now um i purchased like a temporary data plan and i used it all up so i have pretty much no cellular signal at all right now so i'm using the car all right we're coming up on the border it's about three kilometers away or like two miles sure what that is it's probably like a police barrack so yeah we're almost there we've been driving for like 50 minutes so it's like a 50 minute drive from montreal to the border all right here we come not sure what those signs mean but Not a whole lot of traffic compared to when I drove here Saturday. Saturday, there was fucking traffic on both sides here. Doesn't look to be too bad. I mean, there are some cars, but not nearly as much as uh, when I drove in here, when I drove past Saturday, because they were, it was fucking plugged. Check it out. There's even less traffic going into Canada. There's more traffic going into the U.S. than into Canada, which amazes me. As you can see, there's barely, well, okay. As you guys can see, oh, did not mean to do that. You guys, the camera can focus. As you guys can see, there's barely any cars there, which amazes me because I sat there for a good 30 minutes just waiting for, um, so it was pretty plugged up when I drove in Saturday more Saturday afternoon. I think it's because Montreal is kind of a weekend place. I feel like a lot of people go there just for the weekend to, you know, party, and then they drive back to the States. All right, in the meantime, let's, uh, right, let's, uh, how do I do this? I'm going to set it back to a miles per hour. There we go. There we go. Setting complete. There we go, back to Miles. So yeah, we driven 41 miles. Uh, average fuel economy on this drive so far has only been 21.7 miles per gallon. Um, that's the whole 527 miles that I've driven on this trip. Yeah, I've only gotten 21 miles to the gallon, but I also think that's, um, I did a lot of city driving. Well, I didn't do a lot of city driving, but I probably did 100 miles worth of city driving. Um, and that definitely dragged it down. We're almost there, almost there, but sitting for probably about 20 minutes now, but not as long as when uh, driving into Canada. All right, we're almost there. Just, you know, we gotta wait for this car and then it's my turn. All right, it's my turn now. Car's gone. I'm gonna record this. All right, here goes entering the US. Out and party pretty much. Where would you hang out at? Um, 
a couple of nightclubs. Yeah. Uh, walked around, just explored the city. Where did you stay? Uh, Hotel Abri du Voyager. Okay. What do you do down there in New York? What's your job? Uh, I'm a line cook at Martel's Restaurant. Okay. Are you bringing any merchandise and food you want? Uh, I mean, a t-shirt that I bought as a souvenir. That's it. Are you traveling merchandise on behalf of anyone else? No. Does everything in the car belong to you? Uh, yes. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, this jacket's my father's, but... I so, mean, well, yeah. Got it. Thank you. I feel like he asked more questions than the uh, Canadians custom officer did. All right, getting back on a uh, good old Y87. Got a speed bump here, but uh, we're back on the road. Well, we're almost back on the road. Almost home, just passing through uh, Lake George while passing by it. Uh, it is a bit windy here in the mountains. But uh, what are you going to do? Uh, there is a little bit more traffic down here because for the most part there wasn't any traffic on the north way. But now I guess as I'm approaching the capital region it's going to start getting more and more traffic. Alright, well I'm in my own driveway now so I made it home. It was about a... It took about four hours and 15 minutes to get back from the hotel to my house. It was door to door pretty much. Uh, that does include the one stop that I made though uh, and, the, and the way at the border. So it was a little bit quicker than when driving into Canada because that took four and a half hours. Um, the GPS claims it's only three and a half hours from where I live, but that's simply false. I mean, if maybe you drive at night nonstop and do not make any stops whatsoever and there's no traffic at the border, then yeah, maybe it'll be three and a half. But three and a half hours, that's just simply false. But anyways, it was a great trip. I mean, there were a few minor inconveniences, but it's really just because I didn't do a too good job organizing it because I pretty much planned this all last minute. I planned this like a week and ahead. Um, I'm probably going to go back to Montreal when the weather's a little bit warmer, you know, go up there for a part two. But anyways, I guess that wraps up for this vlog. Hope you guys, and please just subscribe if you guys want more videos like these, and have a good day.